I'm Anthony. I've been playing poker for a living since 2019. Hit that intro. Don't slow roll me if you get quad fours, man. You folded King King Jack Jack? You owe me $350. <laughs> Your money should be in there, too. Did you bluff me? Would I, would I ever bluff? I'm leaving out there. I'm on no, tilt. <laughs> tilt. Thank you, sir. I would not lie to you, sir. I told you I had a full house. Doing the Lord's work. Thank you. Thank you very much. Appreciate it. <laughs> Tonight, Friday, August 4th at 7 p.m., Georgetown Poker Club will be hosting our first 1-1 PLO game with buy-ins of $100 to $400. We're trying to offer up a game that allows newcomers to PLO to try the game without having to face off against people who are sitting with tens of thousands of dollars in the quote-unquote low-stakes game. Come on down and you can make the vlog as I will be filming this session and will be posting it on my channel. Before we jump into some cash game action, I want to share my 7th final table in 11 tries in the Wednesday night PLO tournament at the Lodge. Here's some key double ups when my tournament life was on the line. Alright, we are practically all in. We raised... Are we, are we ra uh, check. All in. There we go. We got him. <laughs> we got him. We got him. Easy game. All right, we are all in for our tournament life. At the final table, we've been called. Aces? We got the Kings. We're up against, oh, he's got, all right, he's live. He's got a suck out hand, that's what he has. He oh, hit two pair, oh, no, oh, you didn't hit two pair. Oh, Hold. Uh, yes, we got the double. I got there. I, got, I was there. I was there. there. I was born, <laughs> I started there. <laughs> With 69 entries, only the top seven were cashing, but at the final table, everyone agreed to redistribute $400 to pay 8th and ninth places $200 each. After the ninth player busted, we continued playing for a bit, but with blinds climbing to 30 and 60,000, and the average stack a little over 700,000, we all agreed to an ICM chop, which saw me take 5th place overall for the payout that was set for 4th place. Considering I could have busted and only gotten a payout of 200, I can't complain. We're playing Drama Doogie, where the object is to make an Omaha hand with the community cards, plus two of your whole cards, and then to draw and make a four-card low Badoogie hand, the best being Ace, Deuce, 3-4, all of different suits, in your hand. I start off under the gun plus one with Ace, 4, 7, 8, Jack. There's one caller for 10, I call, next act raises, the small blind folds, the big blind calls, the limper calls, and I call. The flop comes down 5-3-2 with two spades. I flop the second nuts with the wheel, plus I have some Badugi drawing potential in my hole cards. When it checks to me, I bet 10. The original Razor makes it 20. The big blind calls, and I call. I throw away the 8 and Jack and draw 2 to a 7 high Badugi. I pick up the 10 of clubs and the King of hearts, not improving the Badugi side of my hand. The turn comes, the 10 of hearts. We both check to the player who's been raising. He bets 20 and we both call. The river comes the three of diamonds. This is bad because it's possible our wheel may not be good. The player with the strong badugi in the hole might also have a full house with this river. We both check. The player who's been betting continues, and we both call. I got a monster. Call. I got a boat and a six dookie. Really? Awesome. I flopped a wheel. What? Can you change that deck, please? Yeah, uh, six dookie. I already changed it. You did? For the new deck, yeah. It's got five four six two. Yeah, no, you're fine. You're fine. Oh, you. Oh shit, I, I was in real trouble. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I had the ace four too. Nice hand. Nice hand. Reflecting on this hand, yeah, I flopped the wheel, but it's the second nuts, and given the texture of the board cards, I need a lot of those cards to hit a strong badugi in the hole. So I think it's okay for me to give this hand up after I whiff the first draw, because I'm pretty much playing a vulnerable second nuts for half the pot, as flush or board pairs can hurt me as well. It's another hand of Drama Doogie. I'm in the big blind with the junkie 10 8 6 6 3. Three players have limped in. I check my option, and we see a flop of King 8 5 with two diamonds. It fortunately winds up checked around, so I get to draw. I throw away my 10 8 and 6 of diamonds, trying to improve. I pick up a 9 5 and 3, giving me a 9 low Badoogie in the hole. And then. Poker Jesus about to nut all over this bitch! The 7 of hearts hits the turn, giving me the nut straight. It's hard to make a Badoogie, and having the nuts on the board is icing on the cake, so when it checks to me, I have an automatic bet on this turn, and I put out 20. 
Surprisingly, my opponent behind me raises. <laughs> Welcome to Texas. There's two callers. I re-raise the 60, and two of the players continue. <laughs> the river falls the horrible deuce of diamonds bringing in the front door flush. We both checked with the player who raised me. It's supposed to be a black deuce. You got a flush and a 10 doogie. I got nine doogie. That beats me and that beats me. <laughs> I got beat by both of y'all. You both pit me by one. You beat me by one. You beat me I, by had one. The, I had the nuts on the turn, man. They had to come in. I had two flush draws, three pair, and a straight draw. That beats me. Yeah, we got them. <laughs> but your, your hearts were no good. I had the nine eye. Okay. <laughs> Chop that up, please. Queen with the... I'm in the cutoff, and we're playing Archie High Low. In this game, you try to make an eight or better low, or a pair of nines or better for high. You can make, for instance, a wheel to have the nut low plus a qualifying high hand, and you get three draws to get there. I'm dealt a junky King 10 6 5 deuce. The Four of Hearts is our community card. We're seven handed, and not a single player folds, so we've got a family pot on our first draw. I fold my King and 10, trying to improve to a low and possibly a straight. On the first draw, I pick up a jack and an eight, giving me an eight low when I use a community card. Not all that great. There is a bet of 10 and a raise to 20, and I'm not sure what I'm thinking here with everyone in. I should be folding this very rough draw, but I make a bad call and we go six ways to the next draw. I throw away my jack and my eight. Well, that's more like it. Now I have something workable. I pick up a useless nine, but a very good three, giving me a six low and a six high straight allowing me to qualify for both pots. There is a bet of 20, and I raise. The big blind calls, the limper calls, the better calls, and we're going four ways to the final draw, and we will have a second community card come as well. I toss my nine, I pick up a seven, giving me a higher straight, one using the four, that's the community card. Now the blind leads for 20, and we go four ways to the final community card, which is the seven of hearts. Wow. Six purple. Uh, seven straight. Straight to the seven. Straight to the seven also. One low and they get a quarter. I saw the jack of that. That's crazy. I thought my six low was going to be good. I was like, damn, I need an ace on that community card. All right, so we win. We get, a, we get quartered. It's not too terrible. So there was another player in there. I'm under the gun playing Archie High Low with one community card to start and a second dealt after the final draw. I'm dealt King Queen 10 9 3. The community card is a jack. Right off the rip, I'm starting with a made straight, so I raise to 20. Player behind me is all in for 20, and because it's Texas, everyone calls and we're going seven ways to the first draw. And <laughs> the big blind draw is frigging four. I get rid of my three of diamonds, I pick up an eight of hearts. There's a bet to 10, I make it 20 and two players behind me call, as well as the original better. I toss my eight of hearts, a player behind me stands pat, most likely with a low. I pick up a ten, which doesn't change my hand. I check, and it's checked around. I toss the ten. Now two players are pat. I pick up a six. The button bets twenty, and now the small blind raises to forty. I go into the tank. The problem here is that given the number of draws in this game, oftentimes the winning high hands are going to be more heavily weighted towards flushes and full houses, so... It's hard to feel great about my straight. On top of that, anyone with a strong low may raise again, putting me in a spot where I'm stuck in the middle paying capped betting when I'm dead against a better high hand. I opt to fold, but then at showdown, the winning high hand who raised turns over two pair. Now this is important. It will come up in a decision later against the same player. What's it got? Two pair? What the fuck? I folded a straight. Mm. All right, he's got two pair. Six low. We're playing deuce to seven drama. Huh? I'm in the small blind holding two, four, six, seven, eight. In this game, you're trying to make an Omaha hand on the board and a deuce to seven hand in the hole. The nuts being two, three, four, five, seven without a flush in your hand. I'm dealt a pretty rough eight, but given this is a single draw game, Overall, my hand is a monster. I should expect to win half the pot a good chunk of the time. If this was a triple draw game, the rough eight would be tough to hold up. Everyone's lumped in, and I make it 20. 
<laughs> the one time John doesn't raise, I think I can get in for 10 bucks. <laughs> and I may not have mentioned this, but we are in Texas, so we're going six ways to the flop of Ace, Queen, Eight, Rainbow. Overall, we aren't really concerned about the board texture as we're playing based on our deuce to seven hand. So when it checks to us, we bet for value. There's a raise behind, and I re raised a 30. Too much? All your chips, he said. I only did it because of $30, man. We wind up going three ways to the draw, and I stand pat. I'm pat. Oh, no. The turn is the seven of hearts, giving me a weak two pair on the board. I bet 20. There's a raise behind me. I re raise, and we're still going to the river three handed. And he calls. So we're going the final draw. I am pat. No draws. No more draws. Oh, <laughs> I'm still pat though, like a motherfucker. You better believe it. You're still playing triple draw. The river is the king of clubs, and I bet 20. It gets raised to 40. The third player folds, and I just call. I, two pair, and then eight. Yeah. I mean, that, that's a monster in a single draw. Yeah. Oh, yeah. It's a monster in a single draw. My hearts are no good. I had a good round, though. I, I mean, I had a full house draw. I thought my hearts were good, though. I got doubt almost that. Yeah, if I knew my hearts were good, I might have fought you. Yeah, the set of aces and hearts lost. In this hand, we're playing Dramaha 49. Half the pond is awarded to the best Omaha hand. And half is awarded to the highest scoring draw hand. The nuts would be holding all four tens and a nine in your hole cards, which add up to 49. Face cards are worth zero points. On the button, I'm dealt 98863 for a solid hand that's coordinated with high points. There's one call, I raise, the small blind calls, the big blind folds, and we go three ways to a flop of ace, six, four with two clubs. When it checks to me, I bet 10 and both players call. I throw away my three of diamonds, and I pick up the five of hearts, giving me some extra points in the hole. The turn is the six of diamonds. The small blind leads for 20, one call, and I raise to 40, and both players make the call. Poker jeezy in the heezy, keeping it sleazy. The river is the beautiful nine of clubs, so not only do I have heaps of points in the hole, but I also just rivered a full house. They check to me, I bet 20, and they both call. Full house, six is full of nines, Ooh. and a 36, I think, 36. Nine on the river again. Six is full of nines, 36. Yeah. Both have six we both nine. have the same <laughs> hand? <laughs> Holy shit. 20, 29, yeah, 36. Okay. Yeah. And I got we'll, we'll 20, 36. Sure. Yep. <laughs> wow. All right, so we're chopping yeah, unless... Chop, chop. No, no miracle. Okay. Chop, chop. thought I was scooping there. Holy shit. Right hand. So, long story longer. The, uh, Thank you. My buddy gets knocked out one. Uh, buddy... I'm in the big blind playing Dramaha 49, trying to make an Omaha hand on the board, plus high points in my hand. Face cards, again, are zero. I start with King Queen 10 7 Deuce, double suited in clubs and hearts. There's two callers. The button raises, the small blind calls, and my hand isn't great in either direction. I only have two strong cards for making points in the hole. And while I'm double suited, I don't have any nut suits, and there's significant gaps between my cards for straights, plus the deuce dangler is absolutely useless. Despite the great price I'm getting to come along, I think I should be folding here, but I don't, and we go five ways to a flop. The flop is king nine four with two hearts. I've flopped top pair, a gut shot straight draw, and the third flush draw. There's a bet. And again, I think I make a bad call here, and we wind up going five ways to the draw. One player wraps Pat. I ditch my seven and deuce. I fail to improve, exchanging my seven and deuce for an eight and a deuce. The turn is the seven of diamonds. There's a bet of 20, and now while I've missed turning two pair because I threw away my seven, I have picked up an open-ended straight draw. The problem here is that we already have one opponent who stood Pat. Given the original flop texture, it's doubtful there's many hands an opponent would hold all five cards to match up with that flop. That means the player standing pat likely has a lot of points in their hands, which will be weighted heavily towards sixes through tens. If that is correct, then it likely means that player is blocking me significantly from making my straight draw. There's zero chance my own points will be enough for half the pot, so I'm playing for at best half the pot. But only a non-hard jack or six will get me there, and it's possible those cards will give someone else the same straight, and I wind up quartered. 
I should have folded to the first raise pre, and I should have folded at every prior decision point as well. But once again, we make ourselves a bad call. As usual, all five players are going to the river. Boca Jesus about to get you paid! The river is the six of clubs. Well, my ass just got bailed out. If I am getting quartered, having five players in the mix is least made it so it's not going to hurt me. When it checks to me, I bet 20. Oh my god! <laughs> you show me everything but the 10 8? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Uh. All right, here you go. I'm just gonna put these in front of you. Then eight. <laughs> <laughs> Come on, man. You can't beat twenty and you didn't draw. You can't beat twenty pits. I had his eighteen. I had two oh sets my and a god! I kept, I kept you this. Beat twenty. We squeeze. That's squeezing thin value, oh. baby. Squeeze in thin value. Beautiful river. Well, I, I, I kept it because the King Jack had the. Thank you very much. Too. Doing the Lord's work. In this hand, we're playing Oma Draw High High. So you're trying to make the best Omaha hand and the best High Draw hand with your whole cards. Oma Draw and Dramaha are almost the same game. Oma Draw just gives you the option of peaking if you only draw one card. And then you get to either decide to keep that card or get a replacement. In this hand, I'm on the button. There's been a raise, and I three bet it, holding queen nine, six, 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 having rolled up sixes, which is pretty strong for half the pot. The small blind calls, the big blind caps it, and we're going multi way to a flop of ace jack four with two hearts. There's a $10 bet. I make it 20, and both blinds call, as well as the better. I toss my 9, so I hold on to the second nut flush draw for the board, and because some players are drawing one card, we get to see a guy reject the 9 of diamonds, another guy gets the jack of spades, which he keeps. I'm offered the ace of spades, which I elect to keep. The turn comes the 8 of spades. They check to me and I bet 20. There's callers and a check raise, and we all call. The river is the 10 of spades. So, now our previous hand comes into play. The guy who check raised and is going nuts is the same guy who went ham with two pair earlier, pushing me off my straight and Archie. So I'm less inclined to believe him this time. He got what he needed. <laughs> I don't know how I fucking I have, the, I have the fucking world. I have the world. And God, how does that card come out on the river? Look at this. this bing, is so bing, bing, bing. Look at this. Ah. Look, at, look at this. I have the hearts covered. I have all three kids. Wow. How does it come out? Only out. I mean, it's oh my only out. So That's my only out. Scoop this That's my only out. Oh, That's so so fucking gross. I got a straight. I got the nuts on the thing. Oh That's all I got. God. You know you had the nuts on the board. Yeah, yeah. That's all I got. I really feel like I made a lot of mistakes this session, and overall I'm not proud of my play. Fortunately, this was way back in May when we were just starting the Monday mix game at Georgetown Poker Club, and not only was I rusty, but we were also playing a lot of games I was brand new to at the time. I managed to get bailed out a few times in pots I should have never been in, losing only $161 on the night. Thank you all for tuning in. We'll see you in the next episode. You know, after watching a video like this, sometimes I'll like it, sometimes I'll leave a comment, and sometimes I'll subscribe. Sometimes I'll even do all three.